Hi folks, I just wanted to sh show you something here. Striped maple, no terminal buds. Um, terminal buds have been chewed off by deer. This is a clear cut. Problem with this clear cut, as you can see, um, you see all these fiddleheads coming up. <sighs> There's a bazillion ferns in here. There's also grass. There is um, striped maple, of course. Uh, no stump sprouts. You do have little maples on the ground here. I think this clear cut is two years old. A couple of wildflowers here. But what's going to happen with this thing is that it's it's just going to sit here full of ferns. Uh, these uh, striped maples are going to be very prolific in here because nobody killed them before the clear cut. The other thing is it's too small for the amount of deer that are in here in the available forage. So when you see striped maple getting chewed off and you see beech getting chewed off, maybe I'll spit out my turkey call. Hang on. Um, you probably you, you probably don't have enough forage for the deer. So what we want to do on this property is create more forage in another location. And you could either expand on these food plots and let them take off, or you could fence them so that the deer can't get in here. Now right here, I, th I think we're going to fence because there's a, a warbler project going on the next property and they're going to fence, so I'm hoping to continue the fence out through here and encompass this clear cut. You can see it's probably 10 acres. I think there's two 10 acre clear cuts here and then some more down the ridge. So it's a kind of a head scratcher at this point. Uh, once you take your seed source off, it's pretty hard to get any oak back here and there's Nothing much else but red maple, which is not really what we want. We want sugar maple, cherry, oak. Those are our good species for both uh, fruit production and um, timber production. So, um, yeah, most likely spray, fence, plant. I think we're going to put um, what I'd like to do here. And what I'm going to propose in their plan is to put in some um, shrubs, shrubs that are fruit bearing that are gone from the landscape um, and try to get native shrubs back into the landscape so that this is a seed bank for those shrubs and they can spread, you know, over the next century or two, they'll spread out through the forest, hopefully. Now I can turn this into a fantastic, uh, piece of cover that'll provide cover for birds, nesting sites, food cover. Um, and we'll do that, but you know, it'd be a lot better off and a lot cheaper if you just do it right in the first place. So the thing to do here, you know, I can fix this, but be careful before you cut a tree, make sure you understand what's probably going to happen after you do your harvest. You have to Consider that if you go to the neighbor's property next door, it's even even worse in my opinion. I'd rather have a clear cut like this that's a failure than what they have up there, which is fern, striped maple, beech brush. There's nothing there of value to me. I mean, it's just worthless for wildlife and uh, timber. So we'll see what happens here. Uh, you know, seeds can blow in and take hold. Uh, animals can carry seed in here. We can plant. Um, I'd like to put American chestnut in here. Uh, American cranberry. We can put in uh, different viber viburnums. And we can get some really nice fruit bearing shrubs in here. But we're going to have to spray it first because the ferns just won't let anything grow. This is a kind of a southeast facing slope. So it probably gets pretty hot here in the summertime, hot and dry. 
So we don't want ferns taking up all the moisture and of course all the sunlight. But it's easy to get rid of. All I got to do is spray it. I can spray this in a day pretty easy and um, we'll go from there. And I think the, uh, the guys in this hunting club will probably come out here and plant for a day or two. All right, that's the lesson for today. Back to work. What do you know, it's raining again. Can't believe it. <laughs>